Hello again everyone, it's me Matt, hope you're having a wonderful day. So one of the things that most terrified me whilst deployed in Afghanistan as an armoured crewman was RPGs or any kind of anti-tank weapon system to be honest with you. And uh, this is definitely one of the systems also that kind of always came to mind in the back of my head because the toll, which we will talk about today, has been around for some time and it's also been capitalised upon in many different countries and many different states. So when I thought to myself, you know what, one of these things could be fired at me, it was a little terrifying. Uh, so we are talking about the BGM-71 tow tube-launched, optically tracked, wire-guided missile designed as a heavy anti-tank missile. It was developed by Hughes Aircraft Company during the mid and late 1960s. It was designed for both ground and heliborne applications. Production contracts were awarded in 1968 and continued on to this day. First fielded in 1970, the tow is one of the most widely used anti-tank guided missiles in the world. Over 650,000 of these missiles have been made and still going strong today. The missile has been around for 45 years of service, however is still doing very well as a technically advanced platform even though it is wire guided and not as advanced as some of the more technologically advanced systems such as the Javelin. Outstandingly, the TOW anti-tank missile and its variants are used by more than 45 countries around the world still to this day. In 1997, the Hughes Aircraft Company was taken over by Raytheon. So development and production of this anti-tank missile comes under the Raytheon brand, but the original design and procurement of this missile actually came under the design of Hughes Aircraft Company. The tube-launched, optically tracked, wire-guided tow missile system is crew-portable, vehicle-mounted, heavy anti-armor weapon system. It consists of a launcher and a missile that can be effectively employed in all weather conditions to engage tanks and other armored vehicles, and various point targets such as bunkers, crew-serve weapons, launchers, and non-armored vehicles. It also has a limited self-defense capability against threat of helicopters. The launcher consists of a launch tube, traversing unit, missile guidance set or MGS, a night sight, battery assembly, optical sight, tripod, overpack, shroud and carrying strap. As you can tell, this thing is really not suited for the infantry role as being carried on their backs because there's just so much to carry and a lot to either damage or you know get wet in the process because some of the components when this first came out were actually renowned to uh, fail for the fact that when they were trying to connect all this stuff together it was shorting out and having problems. The missiles come in a self-contained case and all the component pieces are linked via cabling. The tow missile itself is a what's known as all-up round missile and is encased in a disposable launch container. The tow can be operated from the ground, vehicles or helicopters was mostly suited however for ground capability when it first started due to the funding and procurement of trying to place these onto helicopters just wasn't feasible at the time of its design. It was also mounted on the improved tow vehicle or ITV, the Bradley Fighting Vehicle and the high mobility multi-purpose wheeled vehicle otherwise known as the Humvee. The Cobra helicopter first focused on this missile platform as its own anti-tank guided weapons platform when it first started using anti-tank missiles. Surprisingly, there are actually six versions of the TOW missile. The original missile, the BGM-71 Alpha Basic TOW, was fielded in 1970. It had a 3,000 meter range and was 6 inches in diameter, except for the warhead, which was 5 inches. The second missile was to be built was the Extended Range TOW. That was delivered in 1978. Delivered in 1981, the BGM-71C Improved TOW, or ITO warhead, included an extended probe for greater standoff and penetration. The BGM-71D TOW-2 weapon system, a product improvement program, was initiated in 1979 and incorporated a full caliber 6 inch warhead with extendable probe on the missile. To compensate for the added weight of the warhead, the missile flight motor was actually redesigned with 30% more total impulse, improved guidance link capability to enhance performance in a degraded environment and guidance link hardening against electro-optical countermeasures were added to the existing launcher as well. In December 1984, a further enhancement to the TOW-2 was started to counter the applique armor threat. Hughes Aircraft developed the TOW-2 Alpha missile for the US Army to defeat advances in the armor threat caused by the advent of the first and second generation of explosive reactive armor, or ERA. The BGM-71E TOW Alpha-2 was incorporated as a tandem warhead armament system to achieve increased lethality against tanks configured with ERA. The newest version of the TOW missile is the BGM-71F TOW-2B, which started production as an engineering change proposal to the FY 1990 production contract. The TOW-2B is the flyover shoot-down missile with two explosively formed penetrators or EFP warheads. 
designed to defeat the next generation of advanced armoured threat well into the 21st century. The TOW 2B features a dual mode sensor and a new generation of armament which is equipped with two warheads subsequently different from each used in the earlier TOW versions. Because the TOW 2B is designed to attack targets from the top, the trajectory places the missile slightly above the target when its two warheads explode downward. The TOW 2B was not really designed to replace the TOW 2 Alpha, and the US Army concurrently fielded both missile versions. The last TOW missile for US forces was produced in May 1997. The TOW Site Improvement Program or TSIP effort was started also in 1990 to significantly enhance the TOW system's current capabilities and ensure its effectiveness into the next decade. However, the Secretary of the Army cancelled the TSIP on the 15th of October 1991 because of declining budget and funding issues. Surprise, surprise. However, the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Research, Development and Acquisition directed the PO of Tactical Missiles to coordinate the development of an affordable alternative. The latter effort subsequently became known as the Improved Target Acquisition System or ITAS, being developed for the Army's Light Forces. The ITAS was a material change to the Ground Tow 2 weapon system for the first to deploy light forces. It improved the tow's target detection recognition and engagement capability by incorporating a second generation forward looking infrared or FLIR and a laser rangefinder and also automatic tracking features. All missile configurations can still be fired allowing room for growth for follow on missiles. The ITAS is being fielded at battalion levels replacing the tow 2 in light infantry units. The modification kit consists of an integrated day and night sight, a laser rangefinder, a target acquisition subsystem or the TAS, a fire control subsystem, a battery power source and a modified traversing unit or TU. The ITAS operates from the Humvee and associated dismounted platforms, but in September 1998 the first unit was equipped with the ITAS with A Troop 117th Cavalry 82nd Airborne Division. On the 27th of July 1993, the PEO of Tactical Missiles approved the acquisition plan for the improved Bradley Acquisition Subsystem or IBAS, which was an improvement of the current Bradley TOW Acquisition and Fire Control Subsystem. This effort was extension of the TOW ITAS program. The entire system is pretty, pretty heavy. <laughs> In practice, it's, you know, man portable, but it's not an effective way of actually using this weapon system. Launcher itself weighs just over 200 pounds and each missile weighs another 40 to 70 pounds depending on the configuration you have it at. In the grand scheme of things, this is really a mounted platform weapon system. To change things up a little bit in the way in which I provide these videos, I'm going to talk a little bit about how the TOW missile performs, but in a Q&A format. So first of all, why is the missile engine in the center of the missile instead of the end of the missile, and why are there multiple engine nozzles? There are two reasons for this configuration. First, the butt of the missile has basically the requirement for the ideal place for the optical tracking beacons. They get priority over the engine. Secondly, the offset of the engine prevents them from destroying the thin wire that trails behind the missile to guide it. As for the multiple nozzles, there are two of them. This provides a higher degree of stability during the burn than just one nozzle. Next question, does the toe spin? No, it does not. The toe is stabilized partially by the wings and control fins and partially by an internal gyroscope that spins at 42,000 RPM. After the trigger is pressed by the user, but before the missile fires, you normally hear a loud whirring sound that's inside the missile. That is that gyroscope powering up. The idea of the tow missile spinning in flight comes from the fact that another ATGM system, the M47 Dragon, fires ram or rolling airframe missiles that spin in flight. Next question, how is the tow launched? The tow is propelled from the barrel by a small launch motor that burns while only inside the barrel and provides just enough thrust to get the missile far away from the launcher to safely ignite the flight motors. Once the flight motor is engaged, it burns for a little less than 2 seconds before it cuts off. From this point, the missile glides to its target relying entirely on its wings for lift and its control surfaces for guidance. Why does the missile have a long nose? The long nose, quote, of the missile contains a small shaped charge that allows the missile to defeat the spaced ERA armor. The warhead, which detonates ahead of the main heat charge, creates a hole in the spaced armor or destroys the ERA prematurely. This way, the main warhead needs only to defeat the base armor of the target. In terms of guidance, tow missiles rely on what's called semi-automatic command line of sight guidance or SAC loss. In missile guidance, there are typically two things that need to be tracked, the target and the missile. Yes, before you say it, the missile knows where it is. I know you all want to say it in the comments. I know you're going to say it. Semi-automatic refers to each of these that are tracked. Early guidance missiles, even World War II missiles, relied on what's called MCLOS, manual command line of sight guidance. 
The M-class denotes that both the target and the missiles were tracked manually. M-class missiles are missiles typically wire or radio guided by a burning magnesium flare in the tail that are guided by command signals sent from the joystick to the missile. This means that the gunner must visually track both the missile as it moves to the target as it moves manually and provide constant flight directions and corrections based on the missile's potential erratic flight. This system proved ineffective if it's hard to aim at moving targets due to the split attention of the gunner, half the target and half on the missile. The Israelis found that they could easily defeat m class missiles. When a launch puff was observed, Israeli vehicles would immediately start to move and fire from the location. The movement combined with the distracting effects of fire resulted in a very low accuracy of the m close missiles. These are experiences that the Saklos came to the fore. The semi-automatic in Saklos means that the gunner need only manually track the target. The missile is tracked automatically by the guidance system on the launcher. Corrections are automatically calculated and transmitted through the wire through a wireless system or on later models even via an actual link. To simply explain the system, the gunner aims at the scope at whatever he wants to shoot at and the missile automatically moves towards the point of aim, even if the reticle is moved as would be the case if the gunner was tracking a moving target. Some advantages of the tow is that the missile has up to 4,500 meter range compared to less than 3 kilometers of the javelin system. Tow missiles are a lot easier to aim than the older m class systems. Tow missiles can easily be mounted on an astonishing range of vehicles, providing even motorized formations with long range anti armor capability. Tow missiles are allegedly capable of destroying airborne helicopters in the hands of a skilled gunner. Some of the disadvantages of tow, though, tow lacks the range of the newer ATGMs such as the Hellfire. Tow is not man portable like they say an AT4 or a Javelin. It can be man portable, but it's just not practical. Wire guided tow missiles could not be fired through dense brush or over water as the brush would destroy the wires and the water would actually short them out, especially if the motors are brushing up water into those systems. Unfortunately, it also takes quite a time to actually reload some of these platforms in some of the motorized configurations such as the Bradley or the ITV system. Unfortunately, the tow is also one of those missile systems that is slowly coming out of use for the fact that they are just too expensive for what they've been designed for. Some of the cheaper, more man-portable systems are taking over tow because they are just so much easier to use, to reload, and to operate. So I hope you learned a little bit about the tow weapons platform today, folks. Uh, a very interesting missile, for sure. Uh, I love the fact that you can guide this thing onto target. I would love to fire a tow. Uh, whenever I see, you know, the lines coming out of those tubes and to see how fast that wire is cabling and spooling out onto the target and how far it can go, it's pretty impressive. I would hate to trip over the wires in the field, though, and I'd love to hear anyone's experiences if they've been in, you know, especially in the American military, tripping over some of that excess wire. I'd love to know if you've ever, you know, come across a tow wire and be like, what the hell is this? Um, I appreciate you stopping by on today's video, folks. Uh, if you did enjoy the videos, please leave me a like. I really need you to uh, show me show me if you like these videos or not. I, I, it helps me a lot. Also, leave me a comment. If I didn't make any mistakes, please also let me know. If you want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future, please click the little bell by the subscribe button. And of course, if you do want to support my channel, you can go check out my Patreon page. It is on the description box below. You can go check out that box. It has a whole host of other social media on there and links and stuff. And thank you to everyone who has been contributing towards my Patreon. I really cannot thank you enough. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll catch you on the next one. All the best. Bye-bye.